<laughs> um, good week of practice, and, you know, short week, but still very productive. So um, walk through tomorrow, and then we'll get ready to go. I know we, by this time there's not a lot left to say or ask, is there? Well, let's ask it anyway. Uh, what about rematches? How do you feel about them? Well, you know, I'm used to them. Um, in the NFL, you play your division opponents twice a year. And then sometimes, you know, in the playoffs, we, matter of fact, one year I played a team three times, the Rams, and uh, twice in the regular season and once in the playoffs. And, uh, they, you know, I, I think that there's probably sometimes too much made of it. You know, I've said this all week, and I really believe it. It's just about going out and playing with intensity and focus and executing, you know, and trying to out-execute your opponent. So I think the best way to approach it usually and typically is that your opponent is just kind of a faceless, nameless object over there, and you're trying to do your best on every play to, to beat that person. So if you can take the kind of the, the emotion out of it, and I'm talking about the emotion of the of the opponent out of it, and just focus on the execution. I think it's a good thing. You ever played the same team back to back? Never. You told me. <laughs> well, I figured you used well, to. Well, he did the research yesterday. Yeah. We stick to our we stick no, to our routine no, too. That's been the go. question all week, hasn't it? I haven't. <laughs> yeah, you knew better than I knew. Hey, Jim, has your approach been that we can do what we did last time and be successful if we execute better, or is it? We need to show them something different. We need to give them different looks. We need to throw in something that they maybe aren't anticipating or wouldn't expect from us. I think it's a combination of both of those things. You know, um, you can't revamp your entire offense or your defensive scheme in a week. You know, there's things that you do as a team, and you do them repetitively, and that's why you become pretty good at them. But at the same time, you've got to you've got to have wrinkles for every opponent. You know, whether it's offensively or defensively, and so. You know, that's got to be our approach, and I'm sure that would be their approach as well. Uh, but I think it just it comes down to us, for us at least, uh, you know, playing to our best, playing to, the, to our max potential. So w were there things at some point during the game last Saturday where you said, let's hold back on that? No. You didn't, you didn't change your... We were trying to win that game. Yeah. To the very last play, we were trying to win yeah. that game. Do, do you have to convince these kids at all that they can win? No, I think... I think that convincing comes in the process and the work in the in the, the days you put in leading up to this matchup. You know, which for us started with our first spring practice about 240 days ago. You know, I think that's where the convincing comes. I don't think it's anything you can just say to them. I think they got to believe it and feel it based upon the work they've done and the success that they've had. Is it is it building? Can you see them? I've seen it build every day for our team. You know, now. We still got to go out and, yeah. and play well and execute. But I think there's a lot of belief on this team that that they're capable of playing with just about anybody in the country or with anybody in the country. Coach, penalties were a big factor in the game last week. Have you done anything specifically to try to clean that up other than just the... You know, there's only so much you can do um, besides, you know, trying to emphasize it and, uh, and talk about it and point it out on film if there is a a situation that comes up where you could be penalized, drill it, you know, put ourselves in positions where uh, if, we'd have, if we'd have been better with our technique or made a better decision, um, you know, we could have avoided a penalty, you know. So those are things you try to do. You try to drill it, you try to emphasize it, you talk about it, and then you just go out and play it, you know. I know you talked about the sacks before. Mm -hmm. Is that, again, a question of execution or is there something you can do differently another back sacks allowed yeah sacks allowed yeah, yeah. you know sacks sacks uh, everyone always kind of points to the offensive line or the or blocking but it's a lot of things it's uh, it's uh, first of all it's pre-snap identification of who could be coming so that involves communication it's uh, you know receivers getting open quick and winning quickly it's a quarterback you know reading the, the, the uh, coverage correctly and getting the ball out of his hands and it's also a function of you know winning up front and then there's times when they might just have a guy that you can't block they bring more than you have in protection and then the quarterback's got to recognize that and, and either get rid of it or run it so uh, you know we've put a lot of emphasis on that this week but we do that every week and uh, you know they got us seven times last time that's that's an awful lot we've got to avoid that this week will you want will Hundley get rid of the ball will you throw more of those short well, sometimes, you know, you, it's it's not necessarily 
what you call, it's what you read, what you see as a quarterback and making the right decision. I think you have to give Stanford credit. They, uh, they have a very disciplined defense and they don't give you a lot of, of pre-snap tips as to what they're going to run. <clears throat> And uh, they do a very good job of disguising their coverage. So we just have to do the best we can to decipher it and deliver it where it needs to be while winning on our routes and, and doing a good job in protection. How important is it for Jonathan to have a, a good game, especially given how he had kind of a tough time last yeah. time around? You know, we broke a couple and we had them called back mm -hmm. for penalties, which so they don't count. Mm -hmm. So it was a tough, it was a tough game. Um, it's always important for us that he gets going. You know, um, we're at our best when he's when he's rolling, and that doesn't necessarily mean right off the bat, but where he can just you know kind of keep going and keep going and then break some late. Mm -hmm. We've got to stay in a position in terms of the score where you know we can feed him the ball late in the game, mm -hmm. and he can make those big plays that he's made for us all year long. I know Noel talked about staying on schedule mm -hmm. last last Saturday. Is is he kind of the first step in staying on schedule to have that established? Um, yeah, staying on schedule for us is is means that. Uh, Eliminating, eliminating pre-snap penalties, mm -hmm. you know. For us, staying on schedule means it's always 10 or less to go. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but getting Jonathan the ball on first and second down and letting him dig for some yards, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. you know, if you can create third and short, you've got a better chance against anybody. Mm -hmm. Are you still wary of making sure he stays fresh for the fourth quarter? Is that less of a concern since you have a long break after this We've got this a little game. break after this yeah. one. <laughs> so uh, we're going to ride that horse a little bit. <laughs> How long a break do you anticipate? <laughs> I don't know. A weekend. <laughs> <laughs> is Walker still the first option at returning pickup? We haven't decided that yet. We're looking at a number of options. We might even put you back there. Right? <laughs> okay. But can you? Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Catch it and take a knee, right? <laughs> With the best of I know you've talked about this before, but what was your first reaction when the Anthony Barr talked to you about changing positions? Well, we it was it was. Uh, Kind of ironic how it happened. Mm -hmm. The day that I was bringing him in to talk about moving the linebacker, he was coming in to talk about moving the linebacker. Mm -hmm. So it just, uh, at least that's how I remember it. He might remember it differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure he does. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I remember it. I though. think the words were coach likes to take credit yeah. for. It. No, I'm not taking credit for it. I, I, uh, I'm quoting him. We both, uh, you know, the way I remember it <laughs> is it was just, uh, you know, one of those cosmic encounters. But it was exciting. Because mm -hmm. we saw a lot of potential in, in mm -hmm. you know, him as, at that position. But we really never knew what he could become until we got to San Bernardino because mm -hmm. he missed so much of spring. Mm -hmm. you know, we've just seen him develop into, you know, I said it the other day, um, and I think that Will Sutton is a great football player. Mm -hmm. But Anthony Barr, to me, is the most impactful defensive player in the Pac-12. Mm -hmm. From day one, when you walked on campus in the spring, or last year even, to right now, how far has everything come, and how far have you come as a head coach, transitioning to this level? Oh, well, I mean, we've come a long way, you know. It's been a, it's been a process, but it's not over yet, and it's really just the start. Regardless of what happens on, on uh, Friday night, uh, you know, our objectives are not, you know, to just be one-year wonders. We, we're trying to build something here that's special and lasting. And, uh, you know, every year competes for playing this game and competes to play in that national title game. I and mean, that's our objective. And we've just got started. I mean, it's, it, I haven't even been on this campus for a year. You know, like I said, I've been with these kids for about 240 days, really, in a, an environment where I can affect them on the practice field and in meetings. So it's just the start of hopefully what I believe will be a long journey and a successful one. You just, you know, what's really awesome is seeing these kids have success. You know, it's just, that's what you want more than anything, is I just want them to taste what it feels like to be a champion. So I don't want to jinx you at all, maybe a little reverse mojo, but you've touched on what it was like last time that you were at Stanford Stadium. Yeah, I remember it. You probably went back and looked it up, huh? Well, I was told a little bit about it. Oh yeah, I got a personal foul. Late hit on kickoff. Yeah, that would beat us. I remember it all. Believe me. <laughs> we were playing for the Rose Bowl at the time, right? Well, we were seven and zero at the time, so uh, it's, yeah, we were seven and zero. This is different, though. This is them, not me. <laughs> I remember it well. Good call. Bad different call. locker rooms, different stadium, though. Yeah. See, no mojo. Yeah, no mojo. <laughs> good call, bad call. Good call. That's good call. You did it then. Yeah, I did. Uh -huh. <laughs>
you know where our penalties come from. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never doubt it. <laughs> That might have been the only penalty I ever had in my career, though. Oh, no. Now I'm going back in the book. <laughs> you know, you, you, so. you do. You can't find that one. That you one's do, buried in you there. You do know I have Don James's phone number, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> He'll tell you I didn't play enough to get penalties. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, 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 thanks. Thanks.